Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Rec Advisory meeting for Tuesday, uh, June 30th, 7 p.m. Um, I'm Stephanie Papacostandis, the chair of the Recreation Advisory Committee. And as the chair, the Town of Exeter Recreation Advisory Committee, I'm invoking the provisions of RSA 91-A. 23B. This meeting will be conducted without a quorum of this body physically present in the same location. All votes will be taken by roll call during this meeting. I'll be starting the meeting by taking a roll call of attendance. When each member states their name, please also state whether there's anyone in the room with you during the meeting. And if so, just identify who they are. So we'll go through and do a roll call. Um, Bryn, I see you. I know you're driving. Hi, I'm here. This is Bryn Sullivan, 44 Hampton Falls Road. No one is with me right now. I'm a little All right, thanks, Bryn. And Dan Provo. Dan Provo, Dan. No one is in the room with me. Excellent. We have a small committee tonight. Miss Molly Cowan. Hey, all. Um, I'm here in the room by myself. Hi. Hi. Oh, and I just saw Mike Whistler just jumped on. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Mike. Can I'm, you I might mute. I'm, I'm on my screen porch and it's raining. Okay, that's fine. Is there anyone there with you, Mike? There is not. Excellent. All right, Molly, we already went through. Greg? I am here and I am alone temporarily until the cookies are done in the oven. Ooh, cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa? I am, uh, I am at home and alone. Okay. Dave, hi. Yes, I'm here and I'm alone. Awesome. And Miss Joanna. Hello, I'm here and I'm alone. <laughs> Excellent. All right. We've got a small group today, so I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, our first order of business was to approve the minutes from the last two meetings, but we do not have a quorum this evening. Um, so we will have to unfortunately table anything that we need to vote on this evening. Um, the meetings, the meeting minutes being uh, one of them. So um, if I could get a motion to table the minutes till next meeting in a second. I move to table the minutes. Thank you. And a second from Dan. Yep. Excellent. And I uh, will go through um, for um, votes on, on yay or nay on that. Bryn? Yay. All right, Dan, you did the second. You vote yay or nay? <laughs> yes. Uh, Mike? Yay. All right. And um, do I need to get uh, Molly and yours, Greg, and, and nope. Lisa, just the nope. boards? All right. Sounds good. So we will we'll table those minutes until the next meeting, um, which will be the third week in um, third Tuesday in July. So we're going to move on to program updates. Um, we're going to address care kids and the summer programs, tennis, pickleball, softball, and baseball. So I'm not sure who would like to address that tonight, if Greg or Melissa or Dave, whoever would I'm, like to address that. I'm going to turn over the care kids presentation to both Melissa and Dave, because they, I got to give them their kudos. They've been outstanding organizing this, and this has really been their program they're taking off with. So, uh, they, they've been outstanding. So I let them explain things they've been doing. And uh, Dave, you want to do a recap? Sure. Um, so we started training last week. Um, we had three days of training. Um, and then um, we've had training this week. We've been starting to set up um, down at the rec park and tonight we had our first ever open house via zoom um, which was interesting I think we had about seven or eight different families on that call uh, we went through all the documents that were made everyone um, just Oh, Dave, you're freezing on us and you're freezing in a weird every, way, every <laughs> an unfortunate way. Um, <laughs> so Melissa, did you want to jump in sure. and, and try it and then when Dave comes in? Sure. So okay. we had about, uh, I think we had seven families on the call tonight. Dave, are you with me? 
no. Yeah, I'm here. I finish up. You just froze. Yeah. That's okay. So, yep, we've done training. We're setting up down at the rec park, getting everything ready. Um, We're shifting the program from where you guys normally come in. Um, A lot of you guys have kids that go to the program where we sort of do uh, the the main stuff down by the tennis court and play, playground. We're actually moving the entire program up to uh, fields two and three, as well as the lower courts. And the reason for that is the governor has recommended that um, programs be closed to the public. So rather than shutting the entire park down, we're trying to shift our program up to a safer area and uh, still let families use the park and, and that kind of stuff. So we're we're revamping and uh, doing some different stuff this summer, but everybody's been super positive and we still have spaces available and we were supposed to find out today. We were really hoping uh, to give you guys feedback. We, uh, through some paperwork through the state, were able to designate ourselves uh, or submit for designation of emergency child care for the summer program, which allows us, we picked up, um, an entire shipment of cleaning supplies and paper towels and hand sanitizer. Um, last Thursday or Friday, I drove into Concord. And it was so exciting. I never thought I'd be excited about hand soap. Um, <laughs> but so, so we got that, which is amazing. And then there's a grant piece to it that we submitted for. They were supposed to release the results today, but they sent us an email saying it won't be till the third now, till Friday. So we're hoping, fingers crossed, um, that we can do that because when we put our budget together, it was dollar in, dollar out. There was no, and there were things that we wanted to add to make the program more fun that we just couldn't. Um, So if we are able to, um, get the funding, we'd be able to add another staff person and add a few things that we really needed to do because um, David, Greg, and I are only three people and we signed mm-hmm. ourselves up for a lot. <laughs> yeah, so, um, But I think it's been really great and David's been doing a fantastic job. Thank you, guys. How many people do we have enrolled right now? 28. Um, and then we have uh, capacity for 40 or 50? 45. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So we'll, um, what avenues are we putting it out there so that people know? Um, I'll put it on Facebook tonight and have you guys put so, it out there? Yeah. So let me, I guess I should backtrack a little bit. The reason that we haven't gone out more is until we find out if we get the funding, we have to take people in groups of nine. So we're, mm-hmm. we're not, we're not near that. But if we get the funding, then we can take that person, even though we don't have nine and okay. rearrange the groups. So as soon as we find anything out, we'll take whoever's left on the wait list. Um, but we just need the extra funding to pay for the la- for the extra counselor. So we're, we were, like I said, we were actually supposed to find out last Friday, then today, and now next Friday. So um, really hoping that even if we can, I mean, cause I think it's like $3,000 for us to bring a counselor on for the summer. So we don't even need a lot. We just need something um, so that we don't lose money for the summer. Now, will that also, the $3,000, will that just cover the extra person or will that cover the activities that you were looking to add to? Nope, that's just the extra person. We submitted for Mm -hmm. $10,000. And what that was, was to cover the extra costs related specifically to COVID. So we didn't submit for any expenses that we would normally do in a normal year. So if we were running a normal program with 45 kids, we we didn't submit for any expenses we normally would have. Um, what we did was we broke it all out at, we took the cleaning supplies, the extra staff for ratios, you know, hand sanitizer, all that stuff, um, and broke that out. And that was going to be an extra $10,000 to run the program this year. And that's what we submitted for. Okay. So we'll see. And how many people are on the wait list? I'm sorry. How many people are on the wait list right now still? I think five or six. Yeah. Five or Five. five for each group. Yeah. For each group. Yeah. So one through four, we have about five and then five, uh, five through seven, we have five. So. Uh, the 10 kids in total about. 10. I must not, yeah. I must not have looked. I, I didn't think it was that many, but. There, there were two, there's two. See, we started, uh, we have a non-resident list and we have a wait list. So we have two kids actually it might be less now on one of them. Uh, we have two kids in one group and then three on the non-residents. So it would be opening it up to non-residents that would allow that. And I know they're really desperate as well. 
because no one around here except us in Hampton are running camps <laughs> and Camp Lincoln, of course, but on a limited basis. Mm -hmm. So the only way to add those groups would be to have that extra staff. Unless you could find someone to donate money because we're our, we've cut like we've been Greg and I were, or David and I were putting up tents. We we're cleaning bathrooms so that we only pay for a company to come in. What I mean, we're <laughs> there is no more left to give, and we would give it. We're given everything we got. We just we just don't have any more money, and um, the revolving account would be the account to take the hit. And we're trying to just break even. Right. We did get a uh, a sponsor for Care Kids. Convenient okay. MD is sponsoring, so that allows us to pay for a contractor to come in and sanitize the uh, the facility nightly, Monday oh, through awesome. Thursday night. So, and uh, I did have a phone conversation with Walmart today in Epping, and they are considering donating some supplies, art supplies, to us because oh, nice. we're trying to give the kids their own like personal like pencil box with their own markers, their own you know, scissors, that kind of stuff. So they're supposed to get back to me tomorrow. Um, they seemed pretty positive about it, but you know, I mean, get, I get that could change. They certainly didn't con commit to it, but they were like, oh, it's it's small. And I was like, yeah, no, we're, we're not asking for a lot. We're just trying to give each camper a, a basically a box of school supplies so that we don't have to sanitize each kid's markers, you yeah. know, just trying to spend more to have the counselors and, and the staff spend more time with the kids, not you know, we're already going to be doing a lot of cleaning, cleaning and sanitizing, but if we can cut down in, in any way, it would be helpful. All right. That's smart. You can really just smart. asking families to provide their own. Cause I'm we are, I want, I'm hopefully going to hear back from them. We talked at our meeting tonight that if families want to send in their own supplies that they can, um, we may put out a, you know, more formal request. Um, I think, if, I think it's totally appropriate to do that. I mean, uh, yeah. Having kids gone through the kindergartens, you know, three of them now, it's like the the letter that goes out, here are the things they need for the classroom. I think people are pretty used to it. We just feel badly because we've already had to increase the price. And mm -hmm. I think that price, that cost went directly to cleaning and staffing. Yeah. So I will say I'm a, a smidgen gun shy for asking anything else because yeah. some of the families that are with us were happy about paying the extra additional costs. So yeah. I'm really trying to find someone to kind of, to pay for that we have it in the budget but it's little stuff like that that maybe i can get the staff person so we're trying to like see what we can barter and and, and move around we have the staff person that we have has gone to all the training we 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 use that out of a contingency line so as soon as we get the yes like she's ready to go she's she we wanted to make sure that she was all trained and and participated in everything so um when we can make it happen, well, well, she's like, when are we hearing? You know, she's she's even dying to to be on board too. So, another thing we might want to think about as well, and I've seen it done. I know we did it with the Y as well, was um, putting out for donations from um, the community. And I know that we had um, we had these care boxes put together that were all. Um, are a lot of art supplies and things like that, these bags that were put together and then they were donated. And, and it was amazing the um, amount of people that were willing to put those together and, and um, bring them in. So um, I'm definitely willing to, if it's um, within guidelines, I'll find out if I can do that or not, but I'm willing to put something out on um, the extra community forum or something like that. Um, and and kind of ask if anybody's willing to put together art supply things. We could put a list of what is needed. Um, and if people know, especially, that there aren't that many there's only you know yeah. 28 there's 28 we asked walmart for 45 because we can take yeah. 45 kids yeah. but yeah anything any you know anything would help i mean i'd be willing if people have pencil boxes that are plastic that we can clean up and they want to drop them off that's fine too it's okay. just getting late you know we're yeah. so much is changing so quickly that when we have an idea we get like days to work on it yeah. so that gets a little tricky um this isn't normally how we roll like we're already planning we start planning summer camp in january <laughs> so this is really we're pushing it as fast as we can <laughs> I, I agree with stephanie i think we should put the word out there to for, for donations um okay people are looking to help for sure it doesn't cost a lot to buy some pencil boxes and some mm -hmm. markers. Nope. Nope. I know we, we got a anything we can do. Here, probably. Yep. We can put that together. That's great. So if anybody is watching um, on TV right now, 
um, over and above us putting something on Eggster Community Forum. If you're interested in donating, um, you know, a, um, a pencil box with some markers and scissors, and maybe we can put on the, um, the rec site what we need, the list of supplies. Um, we can do that. Yeah. We'll reach out to the rec, email us, and uh, we'll make sure that we get that information out as to what we need um, in, those, in those packets. We, we'll take any, uh, any donations Perfect. that we're willing to do. That would be awesome. Thank you. That's great. Hi, Courtney. How are you? I'm good. How are you all doing? Good. I don't see anybody with you, so I know I don't think anyone's with you. <laughs> nope. We, we just have to check. We just have to have you say, hi, I'm here, and I'm alone in my room. Oh, hi, I'm here. I'm alone. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I figured was, I, I could see you. <laughs> <laughs> we want to get the moment. Wait, like, wait, wait, wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Is someone behind me? Hang on. <laughs> All right, guys. So thank you for that update on Care Kids. That was awesome. Did anybody have any questions or anything that they wanted to add to the Care Kids conversation? Thank you guys for pulling this together so quickly. I know we had a million moving parts and had no idea what we were going to do at what points in time. And I'm really impressed and proud to be part of, of this group of, of you guys that have represented this program so well. I mean, it really was just a gunshot start. Let's do it, you know? And so I, you guys really came through and you pulled it together safely. You followed guidelines and, and you continue to follow guidelines. So thank you from us um, for everything that you're doing to, uh, to make the rec thrive. I'd also like to thank James and fire because they've secured masks and gloves yeah thermometers um a bunch of stuff for us and james has been so great with reviewing everything with us to make sure that you know great minds think alike and we're not looking at the regulations the wrong way and, and that kind of stuff so so james and fire have been amazing eric's met with us a bunch of times too awesome. well I, and to give a quick update one of the things that uh we we coordinated with james is the groups now the nine per group can actually interact with each other without Maintain, they don't need to maintain the six foot distancing. So okay. for their mental health, they can actually play normally. It's just, they'll be separate from the other groups. So right. that's the good news. That's great. That's great news actually. It's amazing news. And so we know there's an inherent risk for going to summer camp and we're doing everything we can to keep that to a minimum. But having the kids in groups, and we were going to do whatever it took because it was so important to get them out of the house and do something. Yeah. But being able to play with the, the 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 nine kids in your group together and be able to have, like build those relationships and build friendship bracelets and play soccer, um, it's really important. So that was a really wonderful collaboration with James and and talking about if that was okay. And we are so grateful for that. They still can't play with anybody else in the group. So they can wave, <laughs> but they can play with the kids that are with them. So that's that's awesome. And that's great for the staff too, because that was going to be tough to manage that that yeah. type of environment and having to make sure they're all separated in a certain distance. Mm -hmm. And so I'm glad to hear that. I'm really glad to hear that. Anything else that you don't have for this program to go off the way it should, other than that other staff member? And the, um, the supplies um, part. So, I, I mean, in regards to things we don't have, I mean, I think we're getting stuff. We have to, we've got to do a, 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 nobody can find wipes. We got one big donation um, from the state, a big thing of them, but it, you know, we don't know how long that's going to last. Um, we got really creative and for hand washing stables, we found, this is so weird, um, folding fillet tables so like if you go camping and you go fishing and you want to like cut your food it's like a it's a, a lifetime table and it has like a little sink and you hook it up to a hose and it has a faucet so mm -hmm. we're gonna have two of those um i don't think in regards to things we need right now i think we're okay awesome. um just trying to personalize some of it and make it a little easier for the staff to not sanitize everything right. <laughs> i walmart did have wipes today 
Oh, they did. They did. Uh, you're limited to one. So uh, I know, I know. <laughs> How many of us here? One, two, three. And I was four, just five. actually <laughs> counting as you said that. Isn't that scary? <laughs> but and it was funny because I was like, oh man, what if it's a one of each kind or is it one? And Alexa, my eight year old, was like, it's one, mom. I'm like, okay. So well, we were thrilled to get one thing of wipes. Yeah. If you see them, text us because wipes are like the white whale. We can pretty yeah. much get almost anything else <laughs> yeah they're um so walmart did have them today and they actually had a pretty decent supply of them um up on my way up yeah we were there this afternoon i don't know if there's as i put this on tv and everyone's running out right now <laughs> everyone's getting their keys and going <laughs> um so that's great well keep us updated if there's anything more that you need and we'll put the buzz out for people to maybe put some um of the boxes together with um, the crayons and things like that um so talk to us about summer programs tennis pickleball softball baseball what's going on well, we'll start. We'll go in order. Uh, we had a conversation after our last meeting with Kyle Woolfield. For anyone that knows, Kyle's taught tennis in Exeter for about 30 plus years. And they made the conscious decision not to run tennis at all this okay. summer. Uh, hmm. It wasn't going to be the same. They used to do a lot of tennis camps, but the, the tennis lessons uh, were going to be very pared down. And when they really came push, come to shove, and looked at each individual program, they're like, are we doing this for themselves or for the participants? So they decided to take the whole entire summer off and encourage people to go up there and play tennis, but they would not be providing any type of lessons. So that was uh, that was one of the curveballs that we didn't expect because he was really excited, but you know, at the same time, totally understandable because mm-hmm they were going to have to monitor it just as much as we were monitoring the care kids. They were going to have to keep the group separate. And I mean, talking about tennis, like you don't even want them to enter, touch the balls and then exchange rackets. So for us and them, it it made sense. But Kyle said he will be back in 2021 uh, better than ever. And uh, we hopefully will get back to normal by then and have tennis camps and all the tennis Full. So that is, is he where still offering private lessons, Greg? He is not I interested in doing private lessons because he has such a large clientele. Yeah. There's no way he, him and his staff could even manage that private lessons. Okay. So uh, he t- I totally understand too. It, it's a risk that he didn't feel they wanted to take. So, yeah. but we have a strong core of pickleballers and Kyle has let them uh, <laughs> access his equipment. Okay. So we have a, a couple uh, a couple of volunteers, the Coulters, uh, are volunteering. Now, give you a snapshot of where we are. Pickleball typically has 30 to 40 people from 6.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. Monday through Friday. Mm-hmm. Their first pickleball, they had 12. So there's a half of the group that is still being cautious and the other half that are inheriting the risk. So it is a free program. They're setting it up. Uh, they run it all themselves. They do the whole kit and caboodle. So, uh, and they're, they, they're going to be signed. They sign COVID waivers. We have a COVID waiver now that uh, everyone signs. So it's a Google form. We just email them out. They email them out to everyone. And I can see who actually filled it out and who hasn't. So, it's because we're, we're going very paperless here. We, we don't want to interchange paper. Yeah. So that's been a big thing. And then uh, Mike Whistler knows the baseball and softball are back. Uh, for all those that are excited, <laughs> these sports is definitely, I got to give kudos to uh, both the baseball and softball groups. They've yeah. met the restrictions to a T uh, and done a great job. We have seen a lot of them, their games played at the Exeter High School. Uh, because of us having the concerts and the movies up there. And it's it's really nice to see the kids out there, but to see the precautions of coaches are wearing masks and the kids are wearing masks before they start their drills. And then once they get going, they can finally take – it's it's a breath of fresh air. Uh, and we're really excited to see that happen. And the, the Rookie League is using Gilman Park as usual. Uh, so that is going on. And then 
you're going to see baseball, baseball, and softball. Softball is going to be at the rec park seven days a week, either between adults or youth. So uh, they're going to be up there. The fields are great. The Exeter Youth Softball came up and did a volunteer day and cleaned up mm-hmm. the fields with us and laid about six pallets of pro slide. Uh, so it helps keep the moisture in and it looks great. It kind of freshened up the fields and adult softball is slated to start on Monday. We're still working on getting uh, softballs delivered to us. Uh, those should be in this week. It's a free program this year. It's not anything. It's a sandlot softball, adult softball. So there's no records to be kept. It's, getting adults out there exercising in a safe manner, following the same guidelines as youth softball. I mean, they have to spread out on the benches. I encourage them to bring all their own equipment. Uh, That's all. I'm like the minute I find a violation, it's getting Mm -hmm. shut down. So we want to keep us safe. And I mean, we have anywhere from 17 to 67 years old, I believe that play in that league. So there's a great crowd that comes up there. They'll be playing on Mondays and Thursday nights only uh, while youth softball has the rest of the time. So it's amazing. It's the field of dreams and youth softball will be uh, doing some work up there to give you a little hint. Uh, they are put an RFP out there looking for contractors to build dugouts. So that could be an ongoing project throughout the summer uh, as well as uh, buying parks and records shed. So everyone knows the little cement block house in between fields one and two. Uh, we, with the deal, they're going to buy us a shed that we can put all our equipment in, and then they can have that shed to put their equipment in, especially the riding lawnmower they're, they're purchasing to help drag the fields. Uh, it just makes more sense to be there. We're going to actually have a shed up a little further where the old community gardens were, used to be. Uh, next to the old little playground, there's yeah. they're really overground, so <laughs> most people did not see them. So they're buying a uh, a ten by twelve shed for us, which will be outstanding. Nice. And uh, we're gonna make that our new chill zone for the care kids program, and have all our access to our equipment, and uh, that will be able to be under lock and key too, eventually, if we wanted to. So it'll make it a little more secure. Well, I know I can speak for softball. I'm sure Mike can speak for baseball. We are so grateful for everything you're doing for Parks and Rec. We have our first doubleheader on the fields in Exeter this Thursday, providing it doesn't rain. And I'm so excited to use those fields because they're just awesome. They look great. Um, the girls are the girls are going to play really well there. So thank you for everything you guys are doing for that. We appreciate that. Well, thank yep. you. Uh, that's one of the things. Go ahead. I have a couple of baseball things. Um, I, I noticed your shed over there at Courier got – somebody your little container somebody broke it apart um which we're dealing with vandalism all over um if you have some stuff that you want to put in one of our two sheds at courier i can offline we can talk about that and um and we did get um gilman uh we brought a rototiller from paul and bimbo and we got the uh, baseline weed free and we got a new home plate at Gilman so uh, it's ready to go for the little guys yeah, that's the, this is a great collaboration between like all the leagues where we're just trying to do something for the youth and get people active and especially the adult league which has now come under us anyways uh, everyone needs to get out and get a normal uh, normalcy back in their, their mindset but keeping precautions so we're 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 keeping everything low key and uh, hopefully we have a good summer and we will keep you updated on that awesome did anybody have anything else they wanted to add about um the summer programs or any questions they had all right let's move on to project updates i'm so excited about the first one Kids Park looks amazing. So excited. Um, Greg, Melissa, Dave, if you guys want to touch base on Kids Park and what's going on. and Yeah, I'm actually going to share my screen for the first time. All right, let's see if I can do this. Uh, screen. All right. Everyone can see this? Mm-hmm. All right. Sorry. I had it queued up. I made a little movie for you all. <laughs> That looks so good. (laughs) 
I went by there today. It looked it looks so so great. Yeah, we rode our bikes by twice today. The kids are like itching to climb over there. Yeah. <laughs> and Carrie Burt was absolutely in tears when she saw the uh, the mommy and me swing. Um, she really was just heart warm to see that it was finally in. So I, I just really happy to see that pull together, especially during a time where everything's kind of at a standstill right now. Yes, actually, Carrie was uh, came by. Uh, if, for anyone that doesn't know, Carrie Burt, uh, Deep Meadow Variety, uh, is donating a sum of money to the Parks and Rec to go towards this playground for a daughter that she had lost, Winnie. So uh, the, there's a selfie swing. I didn't take a picture of it uh, because we have to get a replacement part now because <laughs> it got shipped to us slightly damaged, but uh, it's a selfie swing. So it's a mommy and me. Uh, they sit in there, they put the child there. There's a slot where you can actually put the cell phone and record your child's reaction swinging with them. Uh, it's very cool. Uh, so she was there. We were talking about logistics of uh, putting Winnie swing on it. Uh, she has a contractor that does uh, signage that is going to put some vinyl on for us it says Winnie Swing and then we'll have a little plaque explaining what Winnie Swing is so we're very excited uh, to, it came together quickly uh, for anyone that didn't know we started install last Thursday uh, we had the big track trailer came in from Minnesota we unloaded and the majority of the pieces were in place by 12 12 30 that afternoon so it, it was a jigsaw puzzle. Literally, we had ABC. We just put them together. Uh, we bolted them to the ground. And then we had to bring in more playground surfacing than we had anticipated. We had actually budgeted for 60 yards. Uh, we needed a total of almost 120 yards. So uh, that, that was a very deep crevasse that uh, <laughs> we were in that we needed to bring up the level because uh, each – piece required at least 12 inches of cushioning below it so that way there's plenty of uh cushion if kids take a tumble so uh my contractors did a great job and then triple a fence finished the fencing today we're just waiting for a few couple cleanups and then we do have uh something i'm sorry last minute scheduled for thursday uh, unfortunately it's conflicts with melissa and david's staff training but uh we're gonna have a, a little ribbon cutting so uh, I'm hoping to have any of you that can attend uh, mm -hmm. at one o'clock and we'll let the kids go run wild once we do the official ribbon cutting and be open for 4th of July weekend. Um, did you let Carrie know about Thursday so she can be yes. there? Okay, yep. good. Awesome. That's awesome. Um, and then so comes back to letting the kids running wild. I was going to ask you when, when are playgrounds officially open and how are we trying to manage that all, all playgrounds are open okay uh, they opened about two weeks ago um okay. and we have signs posted we'll have a sign posted here as well that we a lot of people nationally are now just realizing that you can't sanitize daily it's yeah. it's going to be impossible because once someone hops on the playground it's not sanitized so it's a lot of it's using your own risk and we do a deep sanitation. We got sanitizer, that uh, a special sanitizer for athletic fields and bleachers and playgrounds that my guys will go out once a week, sanitize the playground, and then have the uh, use at your own risk. I work with the SAU a lot in opening up this the playgrounds because that's one of the things that we were getting a lot of feedback once the governor opened up the state. Like, why aren't we allowed to go to playgrounds? So it's the basic rules. Six foot distancing, uh, lots of hand washing, hand sanitizer, uh, don't touch your face, yada, yada. Keep your belongings away from other people's belongings, similar to what you'd find at any athletic field. It's just trying to keep them in a safe environment mm -hmm. and, and sanitizing as much as we can. All right. Thank you for that. All right. Um, anybody want to add anything on Kids Park? No. All right. I know we touched a little bit about on um, Gilman Park for Rookie League and things like that. Uh, tell us what's going on with the pavilion, if you would. Uh, yes. Pavilion is, is ongoing. COVID-19 is still hampering our supply chain. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a shipment of the, uh, the boards to go on the ceiling. Uh, 
about a month and a half ago. Uh, they started putting them together and then they realized a lot of the product was warped and they refused it back to the manufacturer of or the lumber mill, whoever they got through. So they're waiting. Uh, we should have that rest of that decking uh, delivered to us this week so they can finish it up. And then I will be putting out a RFP to have someone paint it. Uh, that's the one thing we gotta we want to paint everything to make it kind of blend in uh working with dave sharples and seeing how he he gonna give me all the information on what they use to paint it because if anyone's been to gilman it's a combination wood slash uh concrete so we have four concrete posts in the corners that are our main supports and then uh, wooden posts in the middle it is rated for hurricane <laughs> winds so uh nothing will knock that thing down unless uh we have a wrecking ball so it is good and uh we eventually will buy uh, about six to eight picnic tables to go underneath that as well awesome that's a great update anybody have anything else on gilman park any questions discussion okay um let's move on to events update i know we had some concerts and the drive-in movie that have been super successful i was lucky enough to be there on the opening night of the drive-ins i know mike was there with his son and it was awesome if you haven't tried it yet um, please sign up and and come on down it was really a fun event um i'll let melissa greg and dave touch base on what's been going on with the concerts and what's been going on with the movies and let us know. I'm happy to talk about the movies. I got stopped at RJ's today from a guy that had a full mask on. I didn't recognize him. He's like, thank you so much. We saw Jurassic Park. It was amazing. I was like, oh, thank you. So um, I know Greg has gotten emails from people that went at the fire department and um, so just in case you got just a real quick recap, we originally were going to take 50 cars. It just wasn't feeling right to us. It was just a little bit too many people that we weren't comfortable having that many people in that amount of space. Um, so we cut it down to 40 or 45. Um, it's everybody's been so great. They bring blankets. Some sit out in beach chairs. They each get a like designated parking spot along with their car spot. Um some people have brought bug nets into their it's like the coolest thing you have to give these people credit one guy last week had like citronella candle in the back of his pickup truck like it's so funny um so it's been really great we're still um working with vendors we had clyde's cupcakes reach out to us this week um they would like to be one of the vendors um so we're gonna keep doing that and so far, so good. Uh, we still haven't heard about Goonies, so we're going to have to pull the trigger this week. Um, and so if we don't have Goonies, um, we had some other suggestions of movies. Um, we had gotten some feedback, so uh, we can have a chat. Whoa, oh no, hold on if I lost you. Hold on, Mike. Oh, that's nice picture. <laughs> there we go. Sorry about that, guys. My children are with my parents and just tried to use Facebook Messenger for kids. So sorry. About that. <laughs> um, so we had got some feedback that maybe um, that our movie selection had missed um, some uh, important culture and, and that kind of stuff. And, and we would love to chat about that today if you guys want. Um, we had done some research. So to give you some feedback, the movie can't really start till almost nine o'clock. So little, little kid movies is really a little bit tricky. The first week we did Shrek, which really still isn't a little, little kid movie. Um, some parents are okay with that. So we've been sticking to like the older, you know, elementary tween teen, that kind of stuff. So some of the ideas we had were um, cool runnings, um, remember the Titans hidden figures or some of the options that we were thinking about, but we can talk about whatever, I apologize, whatever we would like. And if we want to add something, we have to have it. They, the movie licensing company that we own, we work with has to own the rights to it. Mm -hmm. Um, but we can have a, a discussion about any of those. If, if that is something people would like to talk about. I would um, say, uh, an enthusiastic yay for, Remember the Titans. That was such uh, a great movie. It holds up. I mean, my youngest, who's five, can sit through that whole thing and ask really good questions. And, you know, parents love it. That's that's a great movie. Okay. Any more dis any discussion, guys? I'd um, love to hear wow. from everybody on. 
I put forth, I mean, I, I can send you the list of titles that I ask people on my Facebook page to comment on, um, because that is a big concern for folks here that when we do have um, town events, right, where there are places to showcase um, films or any arts that feature non-white people, um, it doesn't happen. Um, and so I thought that that was a really easy kind of a low bar thing yeah. to, to do, pretty easy to do. So they, a lot of people offered some um, films. Awesome. For- yeah, if you can send those to me, um, we'll definitely take a look. And I, you know, I apologize by the time. Oh. She froze. I don't know. I'm so sorry. I don't know how to send this, shut this off. And there's a friend of my daughter's that won't stop calling, and I don't know how to turn it off. Uh, well, M- Melissa, can, I, is is it possible to to put out the list of movies we have the free rights to? Yeah, that's so actually we, a good idea. We don't have any free rights. We pay uh, almost four hundred right. dollars per per movie. But the the company we use, which you can go right online, it's called Swank Motion Pictures. Okay. So in that, you just click on um, Parks and Recreation, and then you can put the titles in and see if they if they own the titles. Now, the other flip side to that is. They do what like um, a location search. So what they'll do is they'll say, okay, um, Exeter Parks and Rec wants to show this on Friday, July 17th. Oh, wait, Epping right next door is showing it the next day. They won't. So if someone else locally is showing it within a certain amount of time and a certain amount and a certain distance, they won't release that because the studios feel like they're competing with each other. So we just, I usually go with like a bunch of different suggestions and they kind of tell me what's happening what's not happening um and then say yes or no so we can certainly give a bunch of titles and see what they say awesome and if you want to um courtney if you want to email those suggestions too um we can probably plug those in i think melissa and greg could probably plug those in and see if they have the rights to those to be able to use those and that'll give us a good opportunity to kind of break it down we might even be able to kind of put it out there and say here are three that you know they have the rights to and maybe kind of have people vote on which ones they want type of thing um but if you get those movies over um they definitely can start checking those against the rights that would be awesome yeah. i can certainly do that and i just you know again just moving forward i just hope it's something that's kept in mind um, it is. With yeah. and i was actually just gonna say that i'm you know i we we did a community poll and we um put that out before getting that feedback so we would never have put that out with you know if we had got that feedback before it, the list went out so sorry and we will definitely do a better job going forward um, making sure that we're doing the best we can to be inclusive of all people of, of Exeter and, and that kind of stuff. So sorry. One, about- one thing that I definitely want to, Dr. Ryan and myself are going to work with, and please excuse me if I butcher her name, Janelle Preventure. Uh, they reached out to Russ, myself and Bob Lowacki and Dr. Ryan about adding an extra film uh, for a documentary screening of 13th. Uh, and I can send everyone the, the it's, it's something that I think uh, they're thrilled about. It definitely is, is reading from her email in recognition of the Black Lives uh, Matter movement and anti-racism efforts. This is a great uh, documentary to have a discussion about. So uh, we will be adding that as a extra film. We haven't picked a date yet, but we're working on it. Uh, but as long as we have the screen up there and... Uh, she's willing to do all the legwork and, and really wow. get people together. So it's it's something that we're excited about. Hi. I was just uh, pondering that at a future meeting, perhaps the rec board can review the mission of the rec board or our purpose and maybe just be thoughtful or deliberate uh, have we been as inclusive and mindful as we can be and in, in including that in our goals or our mission statement? So we may want to review that mm-hmm. at a future meeting and um, make sure that our values are, are aligned with our community. Thanks, Bryn. That's a great suggestion. I'll actually write it down to put in our next meeting. 
um, and we'll make that one of the agenda items. So I think it's really important to have that discussion for sure. Um, let me write it down. Um, perfect. All right, so we'll move forward on those. And we've also had a lot of conversation discussion um, in passing with people that have been out there that have attended um, the events, the concerts and the movies. And they've actually asked um, that even if next year, which we hope to God is not a COVID year and that we can get past this, but even as things pass, that they really want to make this a summer movie series, like doing the drive-ins. And I know that's a lot for you guys, um, but it's been so well received that people just thought that would be something that people would really look forward to going into the summer every year and that it could really pick up some momentum. And, you know, once we do pass this, this real, you know, unfortunate time that we're sitting in right now of social distancing and not having to um, be together closely, that we'll be able to bring more cars in and people will be able to attend in a different way moving forward. But I just wanted to put that out there. The feedback has been phenomenal that we've gotten. Um, it's been great. So can I just say, cause, and I know Greg's going to kill me, but we're doing every single Friday night for eight weeks and that's a lot yeah. for the staff. So if we do it, can we um, maybe consider once a month or yeah. like some, yeah. some, some balance? Because if I lose every Friday, every summer, um, oh. Yeah, we will be divorced. Yeah, we will yeah. be divorced. <laughs> so I'm all for during COVID, but I'm just saying. <laughs> no, and I definitely think too, doing it once a month would almost make it more special too at that point in time. Like it's something to really, really look forward to um, and get a lot more people at once when we're able to do that. Um, and I want to recognize our rec staff for giving up their Friday nights for this because it is a lot of work and your families miss you. They need they need you around, you know. <gasps> Although it's a little it's a lovely picture, Melissa, though. <laughs> I don't know what to do and she won't stop. <laughs> I, I I'm gonna uh, uh, I gotta go call this girl's mom to tell her to stop. It's been ten times, so yeah. I will be right back. I'm okay. so sorry. You are uh, fine. You are fine. Uh, I would like I would like to say that it's not just giving up their Friday nights. I don't think you guys have any idea how hard it was to put up that tarp mm. to make that stream. I I came by the field the other day on my way from the JV field doing some baseball stuff, and I saw Melissa and Greg over there, and it, this is a lot of work these guys are doing. It's, it's yeah. yeoman's work, and to not get recognized for what they're doing is amazing um, to me. Well, thank you. And now that uh, Coach Ball has those guys out there in the morning a couple days a week, you can maybe get a couple of the offensive linemen to get that up there for you. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. <laughs> well, I got to say – In all it, seriousness, Greg, I think partnering with the SAU on the summer film series because we're connected with EXTV and all that maybe isn't a bad idea in the future just because of the access to the to streaming technology and everything they have right in the building itself. Oh, definitely. That's something we could definitely look into. I know when uh, and Dr. Ryan apologized to me, it was uh, we got approved for the, you know, he gave us approval. Uh, we set up, we started doing everything and he sends me an invite to the school board. He's like, Greg, I forgot to mention it to the school board. <laughs> so he brought me in late. Uh, Joanna was doing the minutes and uh, I just had to give, do my quick pitch. Everyone loved it and they're looking forward to the nostalgic movies that we're showing. So uh, for us in our forties calling it nostalgic now uh, for myself, I'm like, Oh wow. All right. I, <laughs> that was a movie of my youth. Uh, so uh, I think it's a great partnership. Dr. Ryan and Rusty Lister have been outstanding. And that to that point, Dan, so as you all know, for the concerts, we have the drive-in concerts, same format. Uh, we, we're not as strict on parking wise. We still tell them to keep a, a space in between them. Uh, we did have people give us a little bit of uh, <laughs> ruckus uh, <laughs> when the first movie, they wanted to park where they wanted to and walk in and put chairs up, whatever. Uh, but they, they got used to it. And so Rusty found uh, some staging that they used for use for graduation fixed it up, painted it for us. And when we told him, hey, could you move it down about 
25, 30 yards, he enlisted those strong high school linemen to pick up the, the stage pieces and move them down the parking lot for us. And so, I mean, we have access to their power. Rusty's been great. I mean, he comes and checks on us nightly, uh, which is outstanding. And uh, really, I mean, that strong partnership couldn't have been done without Rusty and Dr. Ryan really buying into it. So I think this is going to be a good partnership moving forward. And if you haven't been to one of our concerts, uh, we have another one this Thursday, Cold Engines, a local band will be playing. Uh, and you want to know the unique thing for drive-in concerts, there's no applause, it's honking of horns. So at the end, everyone starts honking the horns. So it's kind of uh, it's awesome. funny to see. Yeah. And each night, we've, we've got about 25 to 30 uh, cars per night. Uh, so we still have plenty of room for people to come down if they want to listen to live music. I mean, if Tupelo can do it, we can do it as well. And uh, it's unfortunately been hot the first couple of them. So hopefully by the time the concert goes off later, it'll be a little bit cooler. Uh, I think this, year, this week's supposed to be in the 80s again. But mm -hmm. I think it's a good kickoff for the 4th of July. So we have a great lineup, uh, all local New Hampshire bands. And uh, I think it's something that it was missed in Exeter. Nice. Awesome. All right. Um, any questions? Any discussion? All right. We'll move on. Oh, to, I'm, um, I'm sorry. Can I, Greg, do you pay these bands? We do. We do. Uh, the bands, uh, that's the one budget line. Uh, when we are asked for a reduction, I approach the select board and Molly and the select board, uh, with their blessing, let, allowed me to really work with Russ and expend the $8,000. I'm happy to say we came in below that. Uh, we had previously were going to be hired just because we're used to having the revolving fund and we we're going to supplement it. And, uh, yeah, no, we, we pay the bands anywhere from $1,200 down to 500 So we have some good quality bands. And uh, yeah, so you, the taxpayers, actually are supporting the, uh, the concert series. Great. Thank you. Happy to do it. <laughs> All right. CIP update, Greg, if you want to touch base on what's going on with CIP. Yes. Uh, CIP was due this past Friday. Uh, we submitted uh, our typical stuff. So to give the board, uh, we are mindful of uh, the economic climate. So we're trying to keep it low base. The first thing on there, if you noticed, we, we heard people loud and clear, playing and playground needs to be replaced. Mm -hmm. So uh, a Warren article, uh, well, a CIP will be submitted for a uh, for consideration for Planet Playground. Here's the details. The details are uh, some things have changed with uh, the state and LWCF requirements. So LWCF no longer allows grantees to receive grants if they just lease the property. So even though we had gotten a, finally gotten an agreement to lease the property, it needs to be in perpetuity forever. So I'm working with the, the, the person that owns the property to see if he'll add that to uh, the lease language. So as long as we can get perpetuity in there, if not, then the other alternative would be purchasing it. So I, I've thrown out both options to him. Uh, with that caveat, there is uh, an LWCF grant that we put our letter of intent in for $300,000. Uh, they do go up to a max of 400, but uh, Melissa and I met with Eric Feldbaum from the state of New Hampshire, and he said it's going to it could be a competitive round. If anyone follows politics, land water conservation was actually just reauthorized permanently. Uh, I don't know if the White House has signed it yet, but he has said he would be signing it. So that's nine hundred million dollars annually that will be available for grants all over the country. And the state of New Hampshire depends on LWCF funds to help support the state park system, but they like giving back to the municipalities. And this is definitely one of those things that could be uh, very important for them because it's acquiring a parcel of land next to an LWCF property. And then we can use that to offset. So in, even though the Warren R, the CIP is for 700,000, because I factored in demolition and everything, the total cost, if we would receive the grant, would be 
uh, significantly less. So it'd be four hundred thousand dollars. So that's number one. Uh, number two, we'll we'll keep the park improvement fund in there. But I think the third one, and Melissa uh, came up with this. We heard people loud and clear last year after the vote got voted down that we needed more data. So we are going to put in a CIP for a recreation master plan. One of the things we felt it was important is maybe if the facilities committee was putting in a CIP for a facilities master plan, that if both of these studies would be done together, you could probably get a lot of the same data on those and then work together uh, but there are a lot of uh, consulting companies out there, as well as the University of New Hampshire that is very interested as well in working on the master plan. So I think having any more supporting documents of what is needed for the future of recreation, especially with the uh, with what the YMCA is doing, all these organized sports leagues, let's let's really get the data. The, the town master plan touched on it, but let's go even deeper. Let's find out what the seniors are really wanting. Uh, and we tried to do it with our senior survey, but I think having a third non uh, third party non-biased group come in uh, and ask those tough questions and really deep dive, then I think it's going to come out better in the end for us. Awesome. We appreciate that guys. Any questions on um, CIP updates from anybody, any feedback, any discussion? Um, Melissa, I was just thinking about having when you have your professional company come in to do the surveys specifically regarding seniors, if you do decide to move forward with the age friendly work from AARP, you just use that and you wouldn't have to do an additional survey. Yeah, Bryn, that's a fantastic idea. And I do apologize for some reason I had in the back of my head that we had on the agenda uh, an item for senior programming. So I will give a quick, quick update. Um, but just to, to bring everybody up to speed with what with what Bryn is talking about, um, about a few weeks before COVID kind of shut all of our meetings down and, and um and stuff, which we'll be starting up again. The senior council had a discussion and I had a discussion with our local AARP representative about getting the classification of age friendly. And actually I think they call it something else now. I apologize. um, Community in Exeter through the senior council. And by doing that, and Bryn has been so wonderful as a representative from the rec board to that council. And I so appreciate her time and honestly her advice. She's so great in keeping me in the loop with all things senior. Um, It's a designation the town would get. And then the town has a certain number of years to sort of put a master plan for what they, excuse my friends quotes. Um, (laughs) It's been a long day. I'm sorry. Um, a master plan for what we want to do for seniors in the community and not just park and rec. That would be the Y park and rec, um, St. Vincent's, all of these groups, meals on wheels and saying one group isn't going to own this. How can we all work together and make the entire community more senior friendly, age friendly, excuse me. Um, And there was a lot of really wonderful feedback from the senior council and wanting to move forward. Uh, We did get a little caught up with COVID and I'll be honest, my focus has been really on providing uh, as we've wanted to do this for a while is take one or two of the benches out and um, load it up and we're going to become a traveling senior center. I love it. We're going to start slow with bingo, which I know is the most stereotypical thing (laughs) on the planet. However, um, we have a folding TV table, a folding chair, and then I have a little clip on battery fan for everyone that participates. Um, cause we do have to do them outside. Um, we would have to set them up. So there's a lot of distance in between. And so we're talking about maybe having picnics, but also, um, you know, going to Sterling Hill and setting up some cones in the parking lot with their property management, um, Um, permission and you know maybe playing some music and different things so we're going to be experimenting over the next few months of just almost going to them in in some cases in some community living environments um, because we can't provide transportation and that's always been the biggest thing is how do we engage this population when, when we can't provide transportation so 
we've dug in and we're going to try to we're going to try to go there. So um, I actually am meeting with Tony from Water Street, who, who manages Water Street um, on Thursday. And then, like I said, reach out to the to the various communities and then maybe having some at our park and rec building um, mm-hmm. out in the parking lot for those that are living in individual homes or inviting people out um, to, to various places. So that's all in the works and i've been talking to some of my ladies that are on the council with me and they're beyond excited so um i don't know if you're seeing this brin but we have some some seniors that are so excited to do stuff some seniors that are so scared to do some stuff some people believe it's happening some people don't believe so we really have the gamut of uh, emotions with this population and just trying to find some things that people can decide whether it's safe for them or not and if they feel comfortable I, I, yeah, I agree about <clears throat> a variety of people um, and attendance for those who, that's my dog barking, for those who do uh, offer activities that are catered for older adults, they're finding a massive decrease in their attendance. Um, like you're ex- exactly how you experienced with pickleball. Um, but that's okay because, you know, it's still about offering it. Yeah, we, we just, we've been talking within the office and if that's, 10 people down talking safely or me I'm out of their apartment and haven't really been socializing. If we can do it safely, um, we'll be sanitizing everything before we go. And when we're done and that kind of stuff, we don't know how it's going to be received. I know they're excited, but when push comes to to shove, we'll see if, um, if people come out for it. So it'll be fine if we can get it going. That's awesome. Let us know what you need for help. And um, if you need able bodies that are, you know, tested to be safe and everything to help out. I know um, I'm definitely I've jumped in with you before and I'd love to do it again. It's a great population to work with. A lot of fun. Um, And um, I really appreciate, too, with the um, the senior council having the discussions with the AARP, you know, the group and, and integrating you know, the why the town, St. Vincent de Paul, because there's always historically been a great deal of competition um, between the different establishments and the community doesn't win that way. So I'm really happy to hear and I'm grateful that you're able to pull together that group that incorporates, you know, our community as a whole rather than parks and rec versus why versus, you know, we've seen the competition way too much and it it really impacts our community. Um, It's not healthy for us to have it that way, especially in a town like ours, because we have a great community and everybody has so much to offer. So thank you for, for pulling those together and for having those discussions with all the groups um, together. I think we're all better off for it. And um, super happy that you guys pulled that together. Um, any more discussion, guys, on um, on the senior programming? No. All right. Um, any old business that we had to discuss? Steph, I don't know if we had mentioned you go back to your competition thing. Uh, Melissa and I, mm. it's, uh, everything blends together. We met with Kim Myers. <laughs> I heard. Yeah. yeah. You want to do a quick update on that? And it was, a, it was a great conversation. We were there for about two hours. Uh, Rob Vicar actually let us uh, have a private meeting on the shooter's patio when he was closed. Ah. So ah. it was very, uh, very quiet back there, but it was great uh, to talk about because Kim dates back to yeah. pre-building for the YMCA yeah. and uh, she really gets collaboration efforts and uh, we're very excited moving forward to start working with them. Once things start going back to normal, uh, just for instance, Kim emailed me over the weekend with something that, uh, I, I'm looking into for CBGB, I, CDB, I, I, the acronym I cannot ever pronounce <laughs> grant out there, that there is a grant that uh, they would definitely be interested in uh, in working with us and hoping to getting. Um, but it, that's, that's a very hard grant to get. <laughs> so let's just say there's a lot of legwork that goes into it. Uh, so that was one of the great things for us that uh, – we got out of this and uh, we look forward to working with the YMCA board and Kim moving forward. That's awesome. Yeah, it was, it was just a wonderful conversation and um, the scope that in which she looks at Exeter and the Y, at least in our meeting was so different. 
Um, not Tanisha's wonderful. We have a wonderful working relationship with everybody, but it was really neat to kind of see uh, the why looking at the community of Exeter in a little different way. So it was, it was really exciting. Good. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. That's awesome. Um, and old business, again, we didn't have anything we really need to touch base. Any updates on um, powder keg or anything like that at this point or? Right now, uh, the chamber was focused on their business after business of the year awards uh, this past yeah. Wednesday, last mm-hmm. Wednesday, I can't remember. Uh, and so uh, I, we we're going to circle back after the 4th of July and start talking to it. We have paused ticket sales temporarily. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's discussions depending on how things go throughout the summer. Do we try to do something not? But just to give you a, a scope of things, the Great American Beer Fest in Colorado, which attracts thousands of people and it's the largest beer fest they have canceled already and they're looking to do more of a virtual beer fest which kind of confuses all of us like how do you do a a beer fest virtually (laughs) and go out and buy a lot of beer i guess and just drink with your friends on zoom i guess that's a beer fest uh but i guess i've been having a beer fest this whole (laughs) whole COVID. i guess i don't know maybe i've been having my own and i didn't even know it (laughs) I think we're as a board and, you know, Greg has a fantastic relationship with the chamber. I think it's just going to be a lot of discussion on, is it the right thing to do? Can we do it? What does it look like? What are things that would be changed? Do we want to change those things? So it will not be an easy decision, whatever the decision is, and it will not be made lightly. Um, It's an awesome event. And I have got to give credit to Greg, like coming in and getting to see this thing. Um, happened has been amazing. I would also like to take a minute for those of you that don't know, last week, Greg was honored by the chamber um, as the community leader of the year, which was really, really exciting. I was actually um, just so, going to mention that. With I, guys, I, was gonna, so. I was just going to say the same thing. Oh, my thunder. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Wow, so, that's great. Congratulations, Greg. Greg. Yeah, thank you. It was actually, it was a very big surprise. And uh, Melissa and David both can attest to this. We don't get into this field for accolades. <laughs> we, for some reason, the three nuts of in us are, we like to do things and see people happy and improve quality of life. And that's the big thing. And uh, Jennifer Wheeler, actually Russ reached out to me and Russ was in on the surprise as well. He's like, I, I want to do a Zoom call with, uh, you and Jen Wheeler on programming and I'm like alright I'm going to bring Melissa in and we're thought, let's talk about Potter Keg and the next thing we hop on a Zoom call and there's like six other people on there and they're like oh congratulations and here you go here, you, you got this award so unfortunately they weren't able to do it in person so we did do it virtually a virtual uh, awards night which was a very cool platform if you ever have the opportunity it's called Remo you had virtual tables that you could hop from. So uh, like, yeah, so you'd have six people, so it wouldn't be a giant Zoom screen that you couldn't talk to anyone. So it was very cool. And uh, I got a, a plaque coming and some wine. I don't drink wine, but my wife loves it. And the <laughs> ironic thing is, it would have been my first Exeter event five minutes from my house in Sandown. Because <laughs> it was going to be at the winery of Sandowns in Zorvino. So I was like, wait a minute. It would have been the shortest commute for one of my work uh, activities ever. <laughs> I need a rain so, check on that. Yeah. Well, I, I would like to say that it's it's very well deserved. And I was going to bring that up. I read it in the paper. And uh, you guys do a great job. Greg, you're the tip of the spear of Melissa and Dave. And uh, do a great job. And and as an AARP member who's been, to the, who's been to the Great American Beer Fest in Denver uh, three times, that is an indoor event oh. in a convention center, and it is packed shoulder to shoulder. So it's mm-hmm. a different animal. Yeah, so one of the things we did, and I have thrown this to David and Melissa, calling it, if we do something – powder keg light how we do it get rid of the big top tents spread out the entire parkway and have a very limited attendance in there that's the one thing if uh the state of new hampshire is just releasing their festival and fair guidelines uh 
and it's doable, but there's still a lot of check boxes that we would need to do to see if yeah. it's even worth it. So, uh, that's not knowing if, we can use the whole parkway. Correct. And that's, that's where I could, we could definitely, and sorry if you hear my cat, uh, <laughs> uh, that's, a, that was my idea, but I haven't broached, I, I have broached it to the chamber, I should say, but they were just thinking business of the year. So they haven't digested it yet. Yeah. When do the festival and fair guidelines come out, Greg? They're technically still in draft form, Dan. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if uh, I'm expecting them to be approved any day. Uh, we get dropped all these surprises all the time, as you all know, following the governor's announcements, like especially for us who deals with permitting, like we go from a cap of 10 people to no cap at all. <laughs> so uh, you can have uh, people on the beach <laughs> and you can have a, as many people in a group as you want, as long as you can six feet distance. And there's a lot, there's still a lot of things that people who are looking to do events and festivals need to hop through. Like, can they six feet distance? We're gonna have to offer masks and hand sanitizers and wiping down touch points. And yeah, it's, there's a lot to it. So uh, we have developed our own checklist here in Exeter and uh, we will be moving forward with that as long as we are under these restrictions and uh, trying to keep people safe. Have you taken the temperature of vendors at all? No. Uh, the beer vendors are definitely interested. Uh, one of the things that go back to my model I thought of is, yes, it, sound, it is a little wasteful, but we'll have to get recyclable glasses. And everyone, you get a fresh plastic. I hate plastic for, with beer. Uh, and plastic cups. So there will be no reusing of cups. Uh, I think that would uh, cut down in, in the spread. Uh, but a few of them are definitely open because they've, they've been hurting for business. That's one thing. Uh, well, the, the beer sales are fine. It's, it's those that have restaurants and uh, a lot of them that are larger that had distributed to restaurants. They lost a massive amount of money mm. taking back their old product mm -hmm. because it had gone stale because the restaurants were closed for months. Mm -hmm. Greg, you, you had mentioned before the, the drop, drop dead date for a decision on the festival is fairly late. Um, as I recall, like even, even like end of July, I think. Yeah, we, 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 the end of July, definitely we'd have to make a decision no matter what, because uh, talking with the beerfest.com guys, uh, because a lot of the tickets that had been purchased was so far away they have to cut mm -hmm. checks granted we've only sold 210 tickets so that's but it's a time consuming process so that's mm -hmm. why we pause the ticket sales until we can reevaluate and that way it gives him time to also refund so uh those conversations are going to be coming mike uh fast and furious and we'll keep the board in in mind and what we discussed uh the chamber has it following the news just like every other business they've been hurting very much as well uh if you look at it they they rely on events and different activities to to and memberships and if businesses are struggling they're not upping their membership to be a chamber member uh so it's it's one of the things that we'd like to help our partners if possible in the chamber yeah and I think that it looks like our next meeting too is uh the July 20th or July 27th I have to look and see on the book so I mean the timing will be really good to have that discussion where the decision needs to be made really the end of July um I think that you know, moving forward into that meeting, we should all be thinking and having discussions about what our thoughts are um, on something like that. And keep in mind too, all the ticket sales by the chip, like 75% of the ticket sales happening in September anyways. So it's not like we, we're, we're selling gangbusters all summer long. Yeah. People like to wait, <laughs> as we all know. <laughs> and so uh, we have time. And one of the other so if we have the event, it'll sell out in a day. Yeah. yeah. Greg, yeah. can I ask who represents public health when making event decisions like this for Exeter? Is there a public health officer or who is advised on things like this? So uh, James Murray, our public health officer, we run everything by. But one of the things that we 
are forming just like the, the town formed a committee on outdoor dining. So there is a committee being formed between parks and recreation, uh, health, fire, police, and public works, because that's one thing that, uh, and I think Molly echoed this in the select board, to limit the exposure of residents uh, or to employees to different events, like, yes, it would be our own event. And we have to see if that is worth it, exposing anyone if we for volunteers for a reason, uh, if that's something we can do. Uh, and any plan would be vetted by this group before it moves forward, especially for us. We feel that as the Parks and Rec, uh, we need to be held to a higher standard uh, and, and really go above and follow the restrictions and the guidelines by the state down to the T. Yeah, and and given that one of our points is always about being healthy, I, I'm i more cautious. The thought of a beer festival absolutely does frightens me in the public health realm, given that our statistics are massively on the rise in this country. Mm-hmm. So I... I just, I, that's my thread is like as public, as a rec department and we're supposed to be promoting healthy activities, it's great that we have all of these things opening up and we're doing things, but um, I'll, you know, I'm just curious as the information comes out from the state and, and guidelines and whatnot, but that's just the thread I want us to keep in mind. Like we also mm-hmm. want to keep our community healthy and right. maybe large group gatherings such as this, shouldn't be done so uh, you know i i look forward to the discussion i I agree Brent, on that too and it's a discussion we'll definitely have to have as a group as well i mean it's a festival that that brings in quite a bit of revenue for us and people enjoy it and people love it but it's also a festival that we know that we have a large a number of people that come from out of state to attend and i mean i'm not just talking from bordering states we had people that came from way outside of um, New England to come to this festival last year as we were chatting coming in. And so, you know, with things on the rise right now, it's something that we'll definitely have to consider and, and speak to. In addition to all the parameters in place about social distancing and keeping six feet away, but we know when one for how enters the body period, that personal space distancing kind of mm-hmm. goes away because people just don't think about it. Um, I think it'll be a good discussion to have for sure. Um, yeah, I think it'll be a, a good discussion for us all to have for sure. Greg, um, is is the end of July the absolute dead dead last, or can we say let's discuss it? At, like, if we go back to chamber, talk about it, come back, bring that back to rec board, and then let them make a decision the second like have another meeting like the second week in august or does it have to be decided that that last week in july i would think for logistic wise because especially if you're ordering product uh the deadline for vendors would be the end of august so i think knowing ahead of time and, and letting them know that it would be canceled i think would be best and not, I'm not looking to, to put the, the public in danger either. So that's where we will have that discussion. And honestly, it, it's probably leaning more to being postponed for 2020 and wait until 2021. But we <laughs> we like to play the what ifs games, you know. <laughs> so what if, what if, and uh, just keeping all possibilities out there. And uh Again, yeah, 26 states were represented last year, Steph. So that just yeah. tells you half the country <laughs> came, yeah. well, half the country yeah. was represented. I, I would just like to put a fine point on this. So I am i don't know how many people watched the select board meeting last night, but there was a permit issued for um, a music fest on July 11th. Now, that is not a town event. Um, it's something that I, you know, it's still sort of pending approval because not all of the T's and I's have been dotted and crossed. Um, but I, I, I mean, I think that we need to, you know, it's a different, there's a different liability if it's a town event mm-hmm. with town sponsorship, um, with town employees, you know, I, I think we need to be really cautious and, and think about that. And I also think um, based on what is happening in terms of states reopening, you know, it's going to be very telling and that might make our decision for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Agreed. 
but I, I would really encourage us to <laughs> to think very high, you know, very carefully about what we want our town, um, our our town to be in, to be enacting. And and I like Bryn taking your suggestion of being, you know, incredibly healthy. We need to, of course, I mean, we'll hold everybody to the same standards, but I am very cautious about putting our name on something like this. I, I, I totally agree. That's that's why I ask about the, the drop dead date. I mean, if yeah. things continue the way they're going now for the next 30 days, uh, I would think on July 30th, it'll be a no brainer. It's not happening. Right. Correct. So I think maybe having the discussion at our next meeting and thinking about that. Will you guys be meeting with the chamber prior to the next meeting, Greg? Yes. When are you guys yep. meeting with the chamber? Uh, I told Jen I'd be circling back with her uh, this week uh, to set up an appointment for next week. So, okay. And now, of course, with us being care kids and senior activities and we'll squeeze it in and most likely it'll be zoom uh be that will make it a little easier so we won't have to be physically in the same location yeah uh, in case we're doing projects or doing other events okay perfect could you say again what the date is if it does happen what the date is october 3rd okay the same weekend as the Deerfield Fair, which it was had gone on for 135 years, <laughs> that was canceled. So, because that uh, should be right when all the academy kids are back, right? Because they're all coming back. Oh, Courtney, I hadn't heard that yet. Is that everybody? Oh, they are. Is that definitive now, Courtney? Yeah. So, oh. so yeah. So, oh, there's there's no. people, um, you know, full number of kids come back. Um, they're going to have the group of seniors and 11th graders come around September 7th, and they'll be here for about three weeks or so, and then they're going to bring back the little kids. Um, so October 3rd, preps and lowers arrive on campus. Oh, my goodness. That might not be a good weekend then. That's a tough <laughs> yeah. one. I'm glad I asked because I was, I was like, oh, I wonder what day this is. So, yeah. <laughs> The um, poor so, people won't be able to get to their own buildings if it's event if it happens. That could be interesting. Okay. So yeah. we're going to bring back half. The, well, like I said, eleventh and twelfth graders on September seventh. They'll be here, and then the little ones will come back on that day of the um, festival. I do have to say. I miss the academy students, <laughs> even the summer school kids uh, that have absolutely no clue what they're doing. They're just like, I'm in Exeter. I'm a junior high kid. And like, uh, I miss the presence. It's it's very like, and all of you have driven through like oh, yeah. late evening. It's quiet. <laughs> I don't have anybody waving to me at the in the sidewalks any crossing the walks anymore. I just like. I drive appropriately, but I just go through without stopping. I'm like, this is weird. Like I'm just always used to stopping for the kids. And so, yeah, and so they're also doing, we're doing all this planning now to keep them on campus. So we're also going to be kind of being mindful of them going out into town. So that'll be another um, big thing coming on the horizon for the town. Okay. And I got I just shout out Lee Drapo at the, uh, working mm -hmm. with the principal uh, was great. She actually, one of the students at PEA secured uh, face masks months ago, and uh, we were able to get 30 of them that we will be distributing to our care kids uh, staff. And Melissa and I have used a couple of them. They're very mm -hmm. nice from uh, Vietnam. Uh, so they're, they're mm -hmm. actually, they're, they're nicer than the masks I had. Uh, Melissa has nice masks because her mom makes them, but uh, <laughs> the ones I had were not the greatest. So I, I want to thank, because uh, they, Phillips Exeter Academy considered uh, hosting us as a rain site as well and was going to really help us if we needed to. But I know when we got confirmation that Lincoln Street School was available to us, uh, they were able, it was able to free up the Harris Center because they were still struggling with how they were going to open up the Harris Center for all the town or for all the PEA employees that depend on it for child care. So that was uh, and that's something Lee is always reaching out to us. So uh, it's an outstanding partnership. Again, we have is with PEA. And Courtney. <laughs> 
All right. Thank you. Thanks for that information, too, because I had no idea that the kids were coming back. I had talked to a a teacher um, this weekend at baseball that was said you guys were still in the discussion. So, yeah, the email went out today to the families. Okay. All right. That's good to know. Mm. All right, guys. um, We reviewed old business. Any more new business that we missed? No. Oh just keep God. your fingers crossed so we can get that grant money. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. All right. Well, let us know if there's anything we can do to help you guys. I know you've got a lot going on, a lot on your plates right now. Um, so let us know where we can help, what we can do. Um, and I know I can only speak for myself, but I know that everybody else is very giving of their time and efforts um, to help out where we can. So just let us know, guys. Okay. With okay. that... I will entertain a motion at 825 to adjourn our meeting today. (laughs) Anyone? I will move to adjourn. Hot dog. Anybody second? I second that. (laughs) Fabulous. Thank you guys for everything you're doing. We really appreciate you. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, everyone.